This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin's HODL culture, which is extremely important. This discussion arises out of our discussion about CASPA, whether CASPA is the next Bitcoin. Spoiler alert, it definitely is not. And then in a follow-up video, I was talking about how the Bitcoin network was bootstrapped, and Derrida commented in the comment section, I saw CASPA Maxi channel talking about when to take profits, something to think about. This whole idea of taking profits really is a crypto thing. For example, here, my CASPA exit strategy, when to take profits. Here's another video that has CASPA profit uh, targets and profit levels. And what's very interesting about this is they're of course all tied to Bitcoin because it's the only real digital asset in the space that matters. And then here's another very complicated chart that will show you when to sell your CASPA. Now, Bitcoin culture is very, very different from the sort of CASPA and crypto culture. As everyone knows, even people who aren't in Bitcoin, the first rule of Bitcoin is you never sell your Bitcoin. And this Batman and Robin uh, meme, you don't sell, you hodl, you hold on for dear life, and you never sell your Bitcoin. So when chip coiners encounter Bitcoin hodl culture, they're often quite puzzled and they say things on my channel like, wait, you're never going to take profits. This is because ship coiners get dumped on more frequently probably than even toilets. In fact, they're so used to it that they understand, at least at a pre-conscious level, that they better not hold on to a crypto position too long since they are the exit liquidity for VCs, for venture capitalists, and for other people who launch these coins and then dump them on retail investors. The entire mentality of hodling is completely foreign to altcoiners, to ship coiners. Instead, they're used to one of two things, taking profits to buy some stupid depreciated Lambo or taking profits on one crypto horse to try to find the next crypto horse to bet on. And this can be a very exhausting way to live your life. Bitcoin is quite, quite different and the culture is quite different. Bitcoin itself is the goal. Bitcoin is the exit. Bitcoin is the destination. And it's not just one more stop on a gambler's journey. Bitcoin is really that in at the end of the journey where you can finally relax and sleep deeply, knowing that your money is safe and secure and will continue to gain purchasing power forever. This is something that the smartest crypto scammers understand as well. Crypto industry is basically a game where people who are smarter than you and more evil than you try to take your Bitcoin in various ways. For example, this is what the EOS scammers did over at Block One. They issued EOS and then they dumped it on retail and bought Bitcoin with it. And now their, their parent company, Block.1, uh, owns 164,000 Bitcoin, while the bag holders who got their EOS lost all their purchasing power versus Bitcoin. This is the real game that's going on, whether you know it or not. And so I thought this exchange was quite interesting on the channel. I saw Casper Maxi channel talking about when to take profits, something to think about. My response, yes, crypto has a totally different mentality from Bitcoin. So when do you take profits? And then here is the question, the bewildered question. So you will never take any Bitcoin profits? This is fiat thinking and crypto thinking that doesn't understand how important Bitcoin hodling is and is encountering a very foreign culture here. And then the same person, Kenzo, Kenzo Life, uh, asked me, have you never sold any of your Bitcoin? And if not, will you never? And my response, never unless forced by a severe medical emergency. emergency. I've never sold any of my Bitcoin. The real game is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible and then spend it directly for goods and services only when necessary. Taking profits, and this is very important, taking profits is converting the best money in the world into a weaker form of money, whether that's other cryptos or fiat money. And then TN1 million said, Bitcoin is like your savings, only you only use it to buy whatever you need. Cryptos like casino chips, you bet on black, cross your fingers and hope you'll win or cash out trying to cut your loss, different mentality. And then I thought Gwyn, uh, Gwyn Ed one had a great comment here. At some point when Bitcoin represents the stable monetary base, one will spend Bitcoin since Bitcoin will have established itself as remuneration, meaning one needs to earn Bitcoin since it's not going to rise in value just by holding it relative to other economic opportunities. Bitcoin will act like a zero cost total market index fund superior to the S&P 500 because it will also capture private equity. In other words, it will capture all this economic productivity, both from publicly traded companies and private companies. And basically the accumulated savings and productivity of humanity. Index funds now service the inflation refuge, which is inferior in representing all the economic output.
and has gains, uh, capital gains taxes on inflation. So at some point, spending Bitcoin to invest in something that will earn, Bitcoin will occur. However, our host clearly thinks it's not now because it's well below the expected adoption rate. And then Kramsa says, just like XRP, Cardano, ETH, ship coins, they're all penny stock trader types and fiat maximalists. I think this is the real wisdom here from the Bitcoin matrix. What are you trying to tell me that I can trade my Bitcoin for a million someday? No, Neo, I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to because you'll be spending it on goods and services. And if it's not you, it will be the next generation. We think about the next generation because as Bitcoiners, we become very low time preference thinkers. Hodling culture is important for the individual and for the family because it breeds these virtues, the virtues of self-control, being less materialistic, focusing more on the people and relationships and experiences in your life rather than just accumulating more clutter and toys, being low time preference in general. Hodling is also very important for the Bitcoin ecosystem, not just for individuals. And this is because when it concerns the ecosystem, you can never develop a circular economy for your money if people are not willing to hodl your money. And this is why even a cool crypto like Monero has failed because even dark web drug dealers dump it for Bitcoin when they're building their long-term savings stashes. Bitcoin hodlers are stronger than Monero hodlers, as you can tell by this chart where Monero just continues to lose value against Bitcoin. I want to wish all of you a happy 4th. If you celebrate it, happy 4th of July. I think that Bitcoin is a spiritual successor to the decentralized governance model that was laid out by the U.S. founding fathers. The American Revolution showed humanity one way out of the tyranny of centralization. But I think the Bitcoin revolution that we're fighting today, it's not against kings, but it's rather against petty tyrants and bureaucrats and bloodthirsty line politicians and their central bank puppet masters who pull the strings. And so Bitcoin is freedom money that can be hodled not just by Americans, but also by our 8 billion brothers and sisters worldwide, because Bitcoin really is the only freedom money that exists in the world today. So wishing you all a happy 4th of July. I'll probably take tomorrow and or the next day off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.